I have been doing this in the last 15 years or so and uh, I to observe that safety revolves around just three things for me is the man the law and the business three very com complex you know elements whenever you enter a place and they say safety these three things are the things that come to mind the worker the law and the business i just want to share a few things in my experience with you most often the man thinks he is invincible things that all the bad things all the horrible things that happen to people can't happen to him and so they simply decide to go against the rules the man most of the times has an ego it is that ego that makes him sometimes angry when you confront them with the truth and so as a practitioner sometimes when people are doing the wrong thing we persuade them just a few days ago I literally have to beg someone to go down his helmet the man is rebellious and so sometimes you have to institute punitive measures against him sometimes you need to press corrective measures against him in order to protect him that's for the man the law it was difficult trying to form an opinion about the law because it was it is deep the law is deep and if you are an occupational safety and health practitioner you know that the environment within which you are supposed to apply your your work is regulated by law excessively most people tend to think that we use our brains to make decisions and make regulations for for the factory but every part of safety regulations safety um, instruction is grounded in the law but this law is also very deep i was trying to give examples of how deep it is and i chanced on um, mr blankson's department did you know that by law there is a certain square meter that will require certain amounts of or pieces of extinguishers <coughs> now i guess most of us didn't know so if we place two extinguishers in the room oh it's okay there are two extinguishers here that's okay but the law prescribes for how many extinguishers can say be in this room is deep is deep because it varies from fire service through factories they have different um, um, specifications for you to meet and so sometimes because it is deep sometimes you negotiate and I have negotiated so many aspects of the law with the regulator so I have a factory that all the time has on less than 200 people on site and then fire service comes and says you need to have smoke detectors in place and then I say well at any point in time I have 200 people here the smoke will reach them before it will reach the de uh, detector and then they say okay yeah that sounds a bit reasonable so for all the places where there is continuous presence of humans we can forget the smoke detector because the humans are even more sensitive than the smoke detector it's deep so as a practitioner sometimes i negotiate it and i encourage you to 
see how best you can negotiate aspects of the law. The law is also an ass. With all due respect, it's an ass. Because if you take the workman compensation law, it tells you that the worker is due compensation. Sorry, the worker is not due compensation when or if there is an accident. If it is established that this worker was working under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Guess what? The next provision after this provision in the Act 187, right, Workmen's Compensation Law, Act 187, the next provision after this provision is that if it is established that the worker at the time of the injury was working for you, it doesn't matter whether he was drunk or he was, he was actually smoking on the job or drinking on the job. He is due compensation. The law is an ass. <laughs> and then, I think this is common knowledge in Ghana. You don't, we all say our laws don't work until you find yourself in trouble. Then you will know that there are laws in Ghana and those laws can bite. So as a practitioner and as fellow practitioners, I encourage you that our laws work. As long as you are not in trouble, they don't work. You get into trouble. Then you see how they will list them for you systematically. So he was talking about his supervisor not being on the job and the work must be shut down. You go and try it. There's no supervisor work unless something happened. Then they will list all that before. Was there a supervisor? No. Uh, what training have you given him? Where is the record? Who, who did the training? Is the person competent to run the training? And all those things will be slapped at you. So our laws can bite. Then finally, the business. I said it's about three things. Safety is about the man, the law, and the business. We have often heard that safety first. I mean, I think it's the most common language in every organization that appears to apply itself in safety. They always say safety first. But you know, truly speaking, safety is not first. Safety first means don't mess up to cost the business. That's what the employer means when he says safety first. Because as a practitioner for several years, I have seen people put safety not second, not third, not fourth, not fifth, but last. And nobody says a thing. Do you know why nobody says a thing? Because it didn't cost the company. It didn't cost the company, so they say safety first. Safety first becomes safety first only after the mess or the action has cost or costed the company. That's when we truly want to apply ourselves to safety first. The business. All safety decisions must make business sense. As a matter of fact, if you bring up a safety decision, no matter how brilliant or how good it is, if it doesn't make business sense, forget it. And I'm telling you, I've been doing this for 15 years. So every time I have a plan, a safety plan, I have to sit down and do a business case for it before my directors will buy into it. So it doesn't matter how brilliant my plans are. If it doesn't make business or economic sense, I can forget it. But what truly is safety? Should safety be about the man, the law, and the business? Well, I say no. 
I have said no. I have, since 2009, I've spoken to forgetting their identity. I've spoken to more than a thousand media houses. And I tell you that safety should not be about the man, the law, and the business. As a matter of fact, safety is about the family. It's about the worker. It's about your family, your mother, your father, your wife, and children. That is how I see safety, and that is what motivates me to look in the face of a man old enough to be my father and say, stop it. That is what motivates me to look in the face of a colleague who probably is more intelligent than I am and ask him to stop something and redirect. Because I look beyond the worker. I always tell my people that I work with, at where I work, that if you died today, and say Prof was organizing a party, I would put on a black shirt, pass by your funeral, spend maybe at most three hours maximum, because people will say safety manager number, safety manager number, and you need to sit for a while. Three hours. I have my white shirt hanged on a hanger in my car. The moment I step out of your home, I change into my white clothes, off to a party. Now, do you know who else can do that? It's your mother, your father, your wife, and your children, whose lives will probably be changed forever. They can't do that. And so when I look at them, I have that audacity to ask you to redirect. And I think that is what safety is about. When young Peter broke his leg as a result of bad work practices, the life of his wife and children were transformed for good because his wife was a watchy seller. For the next one and a half years, she has to leave her watchy and go to 37 every day, probably twice a day. So safety is about you, your family. We can contain or bring about safety at our workplaces truly by caring for the worker, the individual, not the law and not the business. If we care for that individual, we will get safety in place. You take care of the business, you take care of the law, if you truly care for that worker. Thank you.